let's talk about now about monitoring. So this is an important component for the system, for the video system. Uh, not all installations will use an active monitoring. Some of installations will have uh, the recording happening in the in the in the background there in a in a room. And if something happens, if we have like a robbery or if we need to investigate something, they will go to the to this room and and to the investigation. But normally we will have uh, an operation room or someone seeing the images, checking the, the live feed from these cameras uh, and acting if needed. Okay, so this uh, will be our monitoring part. The first one here is the local. The local monitoring uh, directly in the embedded NVR. So the embedded NVRs can handle basically all operation. So it can handle the, the, the image capture, the recording, the playback, the, the monitoring, everything. So here we have um, USB ports that we can connect a keyboard and a mouse. We have the HDMI and VGA to connect the monitor and the cameras, of course and then you can do all the operation, but it's limited because the NVR needs to have uh, a powerful hardware to do all its operation and decode the video. So it will be able to decode locally in a monitor, but we'll face a few uh, limitations depending if it's uh, uh, on, the, on the NVR class, if it's able to decode uh, at a specific resolution or if it will be to de-warp on a fisheye camera. We have several different type of limitations in this type of um, solution. So this is local. Software client. So this one here, it's a software client. So we are talking about uh, a computer We're talking about the monitoring uh, happening in a computer. So this computer is connected through this NFR and you're seeing the image here in this screen. You're operating here the, the PTZ and doing all the monitoring operation in this computer. So in a small installations like um, uh, small uh, uh, stores, etc., we can have like a security room that we can have a, a security guard there with one computer, two monitors, or something like that, it will be able to, to handle uh, more tasks at the same time. We can connect more than the one screen independently, and it will be able to decode more channels at the same time. So it's, uh, it's uh, a better solution than the local one, but still have a few limitations. And we have the third one, that's the visual. So the video basically combine this soft client here solution in a in a bigger scale. So let's assume that this is a very big room, and these here, these little squares here, are televisions grouped by a decoder device. It's a hardware device that you'll be able to plug every cam every television here, for example, and in this decoder, and uh, a, a, a software client that handles, that support a video system, will be able to control it, uh, this decoder, and show the information here in this screen. So you can assume that we can have multiple people here on, on each one on, on its desk working, in on their uh, sites or uh, or locations and checking etc. So here can be uh, displayed the the most critical installations live for the supervisor or if it's happening um, 
uh, an event, a critical event, someone can put here in this screen and have more people looking and helping on the situation. So the video will uh, help the, the entire team to act as a, a group or basically to, to show uh, critical and important feeds that needs to be constant, uh, constantly uh, monitored. So this will vary depending on how uh, each uh, monitoring uh, company do their work, but it's, uh, it's um, a type of monitoring that we can have as well. And as we saw, before that we can have the recording being done by cloud we can have the monitoring as well doing by cloud so let's assume that you have uh, small nvrs or cameras connected directly to 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 the cloud here and cameras you can have a computer here connected to via well, internet browser and, and, and consuming this feed as well. So it, it can be done uh, depending on the size of the, of the installation, this can work very well. And when I, I, I'm saying software client, I forgot here to put mobile devices. So mobile devices, so the application, so mobile application, iPad or tablets, etc will be able to, to use this type of monitoring as well. Okay, so the monitoring task is something that we will do in this video installation and this will require to connect to the NVR to monitor, right? So let's talk about connectivity. What are the types that we can connect? How can we connect to these NVRs from these clients here, software clients or clouds and etc. The first one, it's an IP or host name. So through the network, you can connect. Let's assume here it's in the same installation. We can connect here directly to the NVR's IP. You add in the software and then we start to, to browse it. It's very powerful and, uh, and, um, and has a very good performance because it's locally and you're connecting directly to the NVR without any one in the middle. After that, we have the DNS. So what is the DNS? The DNS in a very basic way Here's the NVR. NVR. Here's the router. Here's the internet. Here's the other router. And here's the computer doing the monitoring. So, and here it's a cellar tower and the mobile phone. So when you connect via IP and a host name, it's easy for LAN, for local area networks. But when we're talking about connecting NVRs remotely from other installations, you have this situation here. So this NVR is an installation that has a, uh, an, a public IP and this public IP can, ch can change or may vary, you know, after uh, a specific amount of time. And if you add this external IP, and uh, after a while it will fail to connect because it will change. So this DDNS, basically we have a server here, on the DNS server, that this NFR uh, needs to have this feature, of course, that you uh, configure here in the NVR. So we have different type of NV, uh, the DNS providers. So once we set an account uh, and uh, the provider here, this NFVR will tell this DNS server, hey, my external IP is this one. And this server will store this information. And when you try to connect to this NFVR, you not use the IP. You use a customized, a custom 
uh, host name that it will create here in the server. And this host name will be translated to the latest external IP on that installation. And this will make this work as you know, we are connecting directly. Okay. And then we'll have the P2P. So P2P is very similar to, to the, the DNS, but it's, it's a, a more, um, it's similar, but it's easier than the DNS because you don't have to set up basically anything. We need to enable here in the NVR, and then you need to basically scan a QR code in the, in the mobile device or include like a P2P ID in the software and it will automatically connect. So it looks like magic, but it has its own way to do this process. We have a P2P server here as well to restore how this NVR is connected through the internet and giving this route to the clients to this NVR. I will not go deep in this uh, content right now, but you need to know that it's an option and actually this is the most used one uh, when we talk about this type of NVRs, the embedded NVRs. The enterprise ones, normally we don't have this type of uh, uh, connectivity, but we have this like this QR code you can scan in the in the mobile application and it will automatically add this NVR. Okay. Uh, one thing that is important for this type of monitoring, we have a few accessories that um, that we didn't talked about yet. Um, so we have the KBDs or joystick. So basically, these type of devices helps a lot the monitoring team to control PTZs, control cameras, control the camera split mode, so here you can see this like a keyboard that you can control PTZ, you can do some uh, uh, functions, uh, you can uh, have a um, like a um, uh, shortcut for playback, live view, a specific camera, so you can type the camera ID. And this type of keyboards that are, are, are meant to, to a video system, it's very used on this uh, monitoring uh, environment because it's very quick to operate uh, instead of a standard keyboard, a PC keyboard. Okay. Now well, let's talk about a few challenges for monitoring. First one is rendering. And this we need to, to, to always be uh, on top of this topic because it's uh, it's something that will really show issues or it will really um, it will really impact it will really impact uh, the monitoring operation the rendering action is to decode the video uh, the video file to the image again and as we are having cameras with more resolution more fps more bit height we need more powerful equipment to do this process so if you need to decode several cameras at the same time we are talking about a lot of processing power and the old softwares the old monitoring softwares use it first only the cpu only the processor to do this this task and we had a limitation on this type of uh, use and then we had newer softwares that start to support the gpu so the graphic using the graphic cards to actually do the graphical processing uh, task for the the computer for the software so then we we can increase a lot uh, the number of cameras, the resolutions, the FPS, the bit height in the end, uh, being decoded at the same time. So we can uh, imagine uh, like a big monitoring room with a video wall with several cameras. We are talking about more and more equipments to be able to handle this rendering part. So 
for monitoring. This is a very important topic, so if you don't have the gears uh, with the correct spec for that, you start to have issues, freezing issues, bro crashing issues of the, ser uh, the, of, the ser uh, of the software, because it would not be able to handle this workload. And bandwidth. Bandwidth local and in the monitoring room as well. So when I say local, I mean, imagine a, um, a, a customer that has several different locations in the country and they are monitoring in just one location. So depending on the location of the store, you will not have a good internet connectivity. And this can impact a lot on the monitoring side, but because if you have a bottleneck in the app link in the in the location you reduce the information that we'll be able to share from this location so we'll not be able to render all the cameras or if you have an issue there so we need to plan accordingly to your um, to your specific locations to each site to check the internet connectivity quality if it's enough for your solution because normally they will share this internet connectivity with the, with the security uh, video system, with other systems as well, with the ERP, with, with the other solutions uh, this company has. So it's a critical point locally. And in the monitoring room as well, because in the end we are handling lot, lots and lots of traffic in this room, in this monitoring room. And we need to have a very good network structure to handle all this data traffic in the room as well. Central monitoring station. So these are a, a type of companies that do this uh, type of work of monitoring that we are talking about. Uh, I will just cover the basic uh, task they do in this process, but I will not cover all the process. I will just cover two topics that they, they do when they are monitoring uh, a client or this central monitoring station can be uh, for just one customer as well. But normally it's, uh, it, they will have more than one customer uh, in, in, in this type of business. So the first action, so they will do the, uh, an active monitoring depending on the contract or depending on the customer type or the way they work but normally they will receive alarms. The alarms that we saw that trigger recordings, these alarms can be, um, um, can be sent to the monitoring uh, viewer software and they can trigger uh, pop-ups or other actions in the monitoring uh, room. So the first thing that we will do, they will check the alarms and check if these are like a real alarm, it's not a false alarm and they will need to treat this, uh, this alarm, right? So second one here is the ACK. So they will do an acknowledge and it will include the information of the actions they are, they are doing in this type of situation because this will be in the reports they will export to the customer or to their supervisors. And then uh, the third one, they will actually do the action. It will call um, the police, will call the security guard in the, in the area, and etc., etc. So, of course, this is a very generic. <clears throat> this is a very generic list uh, of the procedure they would do on this type of situation. But uh, the idea here is just to give you overall of normally what's happening when an alarm comes in in the monitoring uh, room. Okay, so they will uh, check if it's a real alarm. Normally they will open a few camera streams to check if it's not like a, a, some animal that it's there, it's triggering this alarm. So if it's really, um, let's assume that's a false alarm, they will acknowledge this alarm to uh, leave the, the, the critical area they have and, and include some comments there, oh, it's an animal. And then this will be archived to for reports or if it's really uh, a burglar it's happening in an event they will acknowledge to to leave the, that specific area and it will put action the action that they will need to do on this type of event 
it's called uh, the police or called the local staff or etc. So these normally are the steps that they would do in this type of situation. And talking about CMS, we have different um, type of monitoring, right? Monitoring solutions. So we have here, let's assume here, the, the NVR with the cameras, and then we have uh, the internet here, and here the monitoring room with a video wall. With a video wall here, and the staff here. Okay, so we can have this location being connected remotely and monitored here by this uh, central monitoring station or depending on the size of the of the customer. So let's assume that it's uh, like a bank, um, a very important and, and big um, bank. They will operate in several locations, seven countries in several regions. So this normally doesn't work as well. So we have uh, a structure that is called parent and child. So let's assume that we have uh, this installation here and this installation here and this installation here. It's a region. So let's assume it's, uh, it's America's region. So this one will, be, uh, will have a monitoring room. These other uh, ones, it will be for Europe, and this will be for Asia, and etc., etc., etc. So we have here each one with its monitoring room, with its own staff, and etc. And we can have a centralized parent structure that will connect to each one of these central monitoring stations and receive uh, the alarms as well. So this is a, like a very high enterprise class system, but just for you understand that this is an option as well. And, this, and, and on these solutions, we have an option to, to share connection with police departments. For, for example, some countries, this is like a normal procedure. So uh, if it's a high crime area, they, they require for um, homeowners or um, the store owners to share a connection with their NVRs that it's pointing, cameras pointing to the perimeter to help the police to, to monitor the area as well. It, it, it will vary between their, each region, each country, uh, regulations and, and the way they do their work, but it's an option, it's, it's possible as well. Okay, so in this overview, we saw all the, the components and how it looks like uh, a, monitoring, um, a monitoring task, a monitoring uh, operation on the video surveillance.